While Beijing provided a gender equality blueprint, progress has been uneven, slow and even regressive. And the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated those gaps and placed the empowerment agenda in peril. Women everywhere in the world are squeezed into a small corner. Women make up one quarter of those who are managers. They are one quarter of parliamentarians around the world. They are one quarter of those who negotiate in climate change. They are less than a quarter of those who negotiate peace agreements. And all these decisions have a fundamental impact in their capacity to have a life that is meaningful. The forum brings together governments, the UN system and civil society, but in an effort to redefine what multilateralism looks like, it includes the private sector, trade unions, youth, artists and academia, among other stakeholders. I state very clearly, I claim with the leaders that are here today that I am a feminist, a feminist uh, uh, because uh, feminism is humanism, defending the dignity of uh, women, the rights of women is at the same time defending the dignity and the rights of, uh, of uh, humankind, they're not se separable. The combat of um, uh, this is a combat for humanity, for men and women together. These are inseparable. Their global acceleration plan is centered around six action coalitions, gender-based violence, economic justice and rights, bodily autonomy, feminist action for climate justice, technology and innovation, and feminist movements and leadership. Parity is a key element if we want to redistribute power and if we want to create the, tradition, the, the, the conditions for gender equality. And yes, I see a difference here. I see in the, the quality of decisions that are taken. I see a difference also in the work environment where uh, sexual harassment is much more difficult. I also see that there's a greater capacity to have gender equality at the heart of every policy and every initiative that we work on within the UN system. Third the issue is economic parity, economic equality, equal wages. The first female vice president in U.S. history joining the forum virtually from Washington drew a direct link between flourishing democracies and the empowerment of women. Around the world, democracy is in peril. Strong men have become stronger. Human rights abuses have multiplied. Corruption is undermining progress, as misinformation is undermining public confidence. And who gets hurt when democracies fall, when democracies falter? Who gets hurt when democracies fail to live up to their promise? Well, women and girls are among those who suffer. While a stalwart of the movement who gave a historic keynote in Beijing as U.S. First Lady, where she famously said women's rights are human rights, returned 26 years later to provide the effort here with an additional boost. We also need to make sure that the institutions which wield the power in nations, in corporations, in every aspect of the economy and of society, will never be able to turn away again because the demands that will be coming from all of us, but particularly from this next generation, will be unbelievably strong and focused in a way that will demand and expect the changes that these young women deserve. The forum runs through Friday, July 2nd, with President Ramaphosa expected to again address the gathering virtually Thursday. Shervin Bryceby's SABC News, New York.